All right, guys, welcome back to Yospo. And in tonight's video, we are going to get back to working on Snow Bunny. So this car has sat for about a year now uh, since I put my Turbo EG together. So it has a built G22 in it, which is a F22 bottom end H series head. Uh, it's a 12 and a half, 13 one compression motor, depending on uh, the head gasket and how much I had to head cut. This one should be like 12.7 to one. Uh, it made 240 something horsepower uh, on E85 and it has a nitrous kit. Uh, I beat it during the summer, had fun with it, raced it a couple of times. The transmission doesn't shift very well. Uh, I think there's shifter cable issues or something like that. But I have always owned an F20B. I have never actually put my F20B in a car. So I'm going to be pulling the built motor out of the Snow Bunny, the G22. I'm going to be putting a stock F20B in it. I'm going to be putting a M2Y4 transmission, so a non-LSD transmission. Uh, the car will keep its coil unplugged, its uh, Honda and everything. I'm going to plan to have some fun with it. And then when I'm done having fun with it, I will post it for sale. So basically pulling the built motor and the built transmission out, it has a uh, M2B4, or a T2T4 LSD synchro, uh, Synchrotech synchros, everything. But it shifts funny, which I think is just the shifter cables. Uh, so we're going to be pulling the built G22, the LSD transmission out. We are going to be putting a stock F20B, probably won't be too stock. I have a ported head that I plan might stick on it. Uh, this might, well, probably won't run in this video uh, because I plan on showing you what happens when you let a car like this with E85 in the tank set for a whole year without draining the E85 and or draining the oil. You're going to be surprised on how nasty the oil and gas is when it comes out of this thing. So let's get into the video. Let's start tearing into the built G22 EK known as Snow Bunny. Oh yeah, that is exactly what I expected. All right, so. As you've seen, the oil it was very, very, very milky. I was driving this thing before I parked it. I was spraying it, having fun with it. Uh, it is a 12 and a half to one compression motor. So nitrous, of course, creates a very, very, very high cylinder pressure. So the likelihood of blowing a head gasket is very high. Um, I knew it kind of hurt the motor. I heard it makes some funky noises. Uh, but it still started and ran so I just parked it. I knew it started pushing coolant out of the overflow and uh, I didn't want to continue to drive it and hurt it for no reason. So when pulling this motor or pulling the motor out of the car, I decided to pull the cylinder head first just to make sure that the motor was even salvageable. Even though I know it ran, it didn't really smoke or anything, but I knew it was putting coolant or air pressure into the coolant system and it did what I expected it. I expected it, all right, I expected that it did, well, that was weird to say, but I did hurt a little thing. So let me flip the camera around here and show you. So here we have the pistons. You can see valve marks on all the pistons. That was when I had the timing belt come off on the dyno before, about seven years ago uh, with the built flat valve head. And uh, if you look right there, you see that pitting. And you see that pitting? That is from the spark plug. The spark plug no longer exists. And the same cylinder that the spark plug no longer exists, the head gasket no longer exists. So you can see right there, it definitely blew the head gasket, definitely pushed compression from the cylinder into the coolant ports. And that is why it was blowing coolant out. If you remember, I am a Floridian. This was the first car I put together in Pennsylvania and decided to drive in the winter. I had a 50-50 mixture, maybe more like a 70-30 mixture, 70% 70 water, 30% coolant because I took it to the track and I didn't want to put coolant on the track. Being dumb, not paying attention, and obviously I hurt the motor. So it didn't freeze. It didn't crack any of the cylinder walls. The pistons, besides the little marks on them, are phenomenal. The motor still turns over great. You saw the oil, that is not good. So if I ever do plan on reusing this bottom end, I'll clean up the pistons, check the bearing clearances, 
because it did run great. The oil pump still had great oil pressure. Now the cylinder head, that's an easy fix. Get it uh, flattened and reuse that. I was always under the assumption when I put this together that I had the built head on this, but come to find out, this is actually a stock H22 head. There is no springs and retainers in it. And then I was sitting there talking to my friend that was here. You might've seen him in the video. Um, and I remembered that I bent the valves with the uh, built head. So I actually had Pro 1 cams and everything in a stock head, which everyone does not recommend. Uh, they say that it, the factory spring pressure and everything is not meant for, of course, Pro 1 Skunk 2 camshafts. But I drove all winter, a whole year, on this motor with that setup and did not have one issue. So, yes, it can be done. Do I recommend it? No. Do I recommend spraying a 12 and a half, 13 to 1 compression motor on nitrous in the winter? No, I do not. You will end up having problems. Uh, but this was, looks like just that one cylinder got lean uh, and melted the plug. So I'm gonna get to pulling your axles now. As you see, the whole harness is off, everything is off. Uh, get this transmission out, as you've seen, T2, T4. You can see the clutch in there. It's a, I believe this is a spec stage three or four. Uh, has port mounts, everything still there. Got some surface rust on things. I'll clean all this up when I put it back together. But yes, we did damage the built motor. Well, built bottom end. I was always, like I said, under the assumption that it had a built head on it still. But apparently I was wrong. Uh, that's what happens when you have 25 project cars and you're trying to work on everything. So let me get back to work. Um, I'll get back to you once I have axles and trans and everything out. So another thing I wanted to cover because I've seen a lot of questions uh, on the original swap video for the H22 EK is a lot of people were asking about the Hasport mounts. So in the comments, I told them you have to modify stuff to make them work. Um, mainly the rear T-bracket. So this mount, as long as you have a JDM transmission, these three bolt holes are here. If you have an American transmission, the bolt holes are here. Uh, and this one is not tapped, I believe. So you have to actually tap that hole. Uh, mine, of course, is a JDM transmission, so it works. Uh, you need the, I believe, F22 or H23 mount on this side, the post mount, uh, for it to work. And if you want the motor to actually set even in the car, See, this is the hole that Hasport gives you. This is the hole I had to make for the motor to actually set. Like, the valve cover on my car sat perfectly like this. If you ever noticed, my motor sets very good. And I have no axle binding issues. When I tried to use this hole, the motor sat, like, so far forward this way that the axles would actually hit right here like you see how the axles right here and the the whatever whatever this thing's called the uh lower coilover thing the u-bolt that goes around and hooks you to the lower suspension when i tried to use their bolt hole you can see my finger fits in between here right now but when i tried to use their bolt hole literally the axle would hit this until you lowered the car down so as soon as you would turn uh the wheel this way the axle would actually run into this with the way I drilled it out, it doesn't run into that. I remember seeing a lot of comments on that, asking how I got the Hasport mounts to work. Uh, and my alternator, literally, I had to trim the bottom of the headlight right here because my alternator literally sets like that close. But when I had it on theirs, my alternator sat down a little farther. So, yes, you do have to modify the rear T-bracket. I just literally moved the hole over, uh, basically like a hand width apart. And then I made it work. But they are a pain in the butt to get in place. Another thing I wanted to go over is the question I get the most on the G-Series or the hybrid builds. What head gasket you use? I always use an F22 head gasket. So this is a Cometic three-layer F22 head gasket. Because uh, I use the head gasket that matches the block. The water pipe right here, you see this is H22 water pipe, and then this is F22 water pipe. And then I just use a rubber hose in between. And then the water pump itself, this is a F22 water pump using an H22 pulley. I always get the question, so H22 lower pulley, H22 water pump pulley on an F22 water pump, 
F22 inside hose for your heater. So I actually have heat on this car. And then H22 out so that it hooks to the cylinder head. And then the cylinder head itself, you have to block off. Like, actually get welded up. These two ports right here. So on an H22, you have one port here, one port here, one port here. And normally you have one port here. You can see I had it welded up. And then machined. So you block off these two ports. They actually sell kits for plugs. You can do it, but I just have them welded up. And that's because they go right here and right here. If you don't have those welded up, it will leak a ton of oil. You will have major oil leaks and you will hate a hybrid G-Series motor. All right, guys. So we're going to end the video off here. Here is the F20B. There's the old G22. There's my secondary G22. Let me flip the camera around here and I'll show you these. So this is the uh, F22A6 that came out of the car. Uh, that's converted to, you know, uh, H22 water pump, H22 water pipe, and everything to run a full H22 cylinder head. Here is my secondary motor. This is the one I built uh, during the busy moto era. This has an H22 long rod setup in an F22 block using 4G63 uh, Weisco pistons. As you can see, the block guard, this thing is ancient. I've actually had this block assembled for probably 10 plus years, and I have never actually used it. It has like the KS tuned oil pump delete, everything you could kind of do to it. You can see the drain down there for the turbo. Uh, this was actually originally a F22A4. Um, one day i'm gonna slap these in something and turbocharge it uh there's the cylinder head i already showed header with a megaphone on the end uh, there's the spec clutch i was using here is the actual motor that's going to go in it this is an f20b i bought for really cheap because it had uh bent exhaust valves in three of the cylinders because somebody did the timing wrong uh i've swapped the cylinder head i've put arp head studs in it I'm cleaning up the stuff and checking over the bottom end. All the bearings look really good. Um, this motor was supposedly fully rebuilt and then somebody did the timing wrong and bent the valves. There's a spare H22 and there's another spare H22 over there. Uh, that was actually the original motor that I put in this car in the first H22 video. Uh, but I need to get a tensioner bolt. This is a uh, oil based tensioner uh, as the original H22s come. I convert them to H23 manual tensioner. Well, the bolt hole on this motor is stripped, so I thread tapped it and chased it, but the bolt no longer works, so I need to get a longer bolt for the new threads. Um, that motor's going into storage, that motor's going into storage, that cylinder head is storage. Uh, this is a fully ported F20B cylinder head using factory um, springs and retainers and everything. I put factory Type S cams in it. This does have Type S cams, I've measured them. They are Type S cams. They're not H22A cams or anything. I mean, H22A4 cams or anything like that. Um, but this will end the video. There's the car. No motor. There's also on the floor all the wiring and shifter cables. I should switch those shifter cables out while I have a motor out of the car. Um, just to make it easier on myself. But yeah, I love these H22, G22, F20Bs. But like I said earlier, I've never actually put an F20B in any of my cars. So this is my opportunity to do it. And hopefully you guys follow along in the process. Hopefully you enjoy the videos uh, coming up and uh, stay tuned. Subscribe if you want to see more action with the G22s, the F20B and the H22s.